we've been feeling it ever <laughs> since we got back from Christmas break. I'll That's tell you that fun. now. The coaches, people around, students, you know, our team itself, we're just we're ready for it. It can't come fast enough. Well, hello, baseball fans. Welcome to another season of UNCW Seahawks baseball. We're here to uh, preseason all of it. Here with Chuck Carey. I'm Aaron Schoomaker. Chuck's been covering the team for years and years and years, consistently for the last six or seven or so. And uh, we're here to pretty much break down the whole season for you. Uh, Chuck, I know you've had a chance to spend a lot of time with the team already, talk to the coaches, talk to a lot of the players. Tell us kind of what is your general feel of the team already? Well, I think it's a team that's uh, in a pretty good position. And when I say that is uh, they're picked fourth in the conference. And I think they always set very high standards for themselves. And uh, they feel like they can contend. And I feel like they can contend for a conference championship as well. I know talking with a lot of the players, they like the position they're in because uh, at least nationally and at least around the conference, they feel like they're falling a little bit under the radar, which uh, sort of means that maybe they can sneak up on yep. some people. So, Well, absolutely. Well, as you can see, we're out here at Brooksfield. It's a beautiful day. Already feels like baseball weather, which is a good thing. Um, we're going to get into some of the media day, which was a little bit colder. That was last week. We're also going to get into some of the uh, preseason banquet, which was the week before that. But let's, let's continue talking about this team a little bit, Chuck. What are some of the strengths you see from this team coming into the season already? Well, uh, they have a lot of experience on the mound. They can put some really um, experienced guys out there. Um, I think uh, with the new bats and, and all, it's, um, the ball's not going to travel as far, obviously, and I think it's going to give pitchers a little more confidence to know that they can really pitch inside and uh, they can really jam hitters and, uh, and not have to worry about so much about a flare falling in for a hit or someone muscling one into the gap now. So uh, I think uh, pitching uh, uh, sounds like it should be a strength and I think they have some uh, position players who uh, are, uh, well on the right side of the infield for example, uh, both are sophomores but mm -hmm. they played a lot of baseball here and mm -hmm. I, I think that's going to be a strength and also. Well, absolutely. Well, at that media day, we got a chance to talk to a lot of the players and a lot of the coaches, and a lot of what they had to say focused on the pitching staff, the defense, and the importance of that, especially with the transition of the bats. Let's go to some of that right now. Media day 2011 was dominated by two questions. One, how will the new bats, now more regulated and most would say popped down, affect the Seahawks? And two, what are we to make of all the new faces? The first of the two has a wide variety of answers depending on who you talk to in the UNCW dugout. Never really like to see people too comfortable out over the plate, so I think the bats maybe will help as far as like getting that across and uh, from a mental standpoint I think it, it, it sets the pitcher's minds a little bit more at ease of, of not maybe fearing as much being able to go in there. Probably the thing is it's affected the most in the fall when we knew the change was, was coming into play. Uh, really made a conscious effort. Coach Howell has really made a conscious effort with our pitching staff to pound the strike zone even more and, and uh, stay aggressive on the mound. I think it doesn't, it, where guys might have been afraid to go inside with the old bats, you know, you get a fisted ball that falls in for a double or fisted balls even fly out of the yard. Um, it's not going to happen this year with these new bats. You know, that even in the few scrimmages that we've been able to have, um, you know, you notice it with guys, you know, you challenge guys inside and they fist balls off and pop up to yourself or the shortstop or just swing over it. You know, it's it's a totally different ball game with these new bats. Like, the bats that we used last year and in the years past, they were really, everyone knows, they were really loud. Not, not you know, not a lot of people like the sound of, you know, the loud ping. Mm -hmm. But now, now this year, it's more of a, like a wooden metal sound, I guess, if, mm -hmm. if we would uh, call it that. But, I mean, just... This is always, you know, good reads in the outfield are always going to be key. You don't want to take a bad read towards the ball and then ends up sailing over your head or ends up, you know, fall, falling down in front of you. With the bats, uh, power numbers will be down a little bit, but I think if, if players can hit, they can hit with these bats just as well as they can hit with the ones we've used in the past. The Seahawks will dress nearly half their roster in 2011 with new faces, whether transfers or freshmen, and will need to replace some key players. First baseman Robbie Monday and catcher Cody Stanley and defensive player of the year Mike Rooney are all gone, as well as a host of pitchers. So how does UNCW feel about the departures and look to fill the gaps? That's exactly what we asked. 
This year we got a um, we got a great lineup. I think any 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 given day uh, can be a different player each day. Different different players stepping up. I mean, everybody has stepped in and just produced. And we have guys that can play multiple positions, and it just it helps out as a team a lot better. And yes, you, losing Mike Rooney was a big loss. You know, defensive player over in our conference, but. There's always people that have been stepping up, and we've had people in the fall and this spring that have stepped up tremendously just to help out our program. Things are going well for me. Uh, it's a big adjustment going from high school where, where it's a less of a time commitment, uh, only a couple months out of the year, to being a year-round sport when you get to college. And it took a couple months to get used to that, but the older guys helped out a lot, and it's a, it's a real family, so it's going well. You know, Matt Campbell shored some things up for us at third base. Matt had a great fall and, and uh, has carried it into the spring in the middle of the infield with uh, Jake Koenig and Cam Cockman, Michael Bass, all three of those guys. Uh, in all honesty, all three of them need to be in the lineup and, and we'll find a, another spot for one of those three. And as with any media day, the records are even, making optimism high. So just where do these Seahawks hope to land when all is said and done on the season? You know, we like to joke around, but when it comes to playing on the baseball field, we're always right there. You know, <laughs> we always got our minds straight, but as a team, it's great. It's a great atmosphere to be around. We're going to come out, we're going to compete every day, and we're going to find a way to work our way to the top and, and show folks that, uh, you know, even with new faces, we, we can still battle for a conference championship. All right, we're back with Chuck now, and as you heard, there's a lot of changes that are going to be coming the way in terms of college baseball as a whole. The Seahawks team is no exception to that. And Chuck, your opinion with these bats, how do you think that's going to affect this team and where they go within this conference? Um, I don't think from... Uh, an offensive standpoint, the bats are going to make that big of a t difference in the end. Uh, I think some people may struggle maybe early on in the year, but uh, I think this team will be able to, uh, uh, you know, make contact and uh, and use a lot of hidden runs. And uh, they're not going to be a type of team that's going to hit the ball out of the ballpark. Some guys like Andrew Kane has uh, tremendous power, and I think that. Um, uh, a guy like Hunter Ridge uh, certainly right. can hit the ball out of the park, but I don't think people are going to be swinging for the fences quite as much as in the past just because of, uh, you know, these bats. And Absolutely, absolutely. Well, you talked about how it may not be a deficit. What are some challenges that will face this team moving forward? I think uh, one of the things is trying to blend in so many new players, uh, counting transfer uh, Ryan Leach, a pitcher from North Carolina, I think there are 15 new players on this club. And uh, so you're going to try to uh, mix them in uh, with some mm -hmm. of the players who've been here. And the other thing is they're moving players around, playing maybe little, a little different positions than right. in the past. Like you may, for example, see a Cam Cockman out in the left field some, or you may see some other players uh, uh, playing uh, different positions at times uh, and all. So I think that uh, is going to be a challenge. Yeah, a lot like what Coach Mark Scaff says is you never know until you get the umpire behind the plate and get another color uniform on the field. <laughs> but, uh, well, before any of this happens, before any of the media day even did happen, we got a chance to go to the preseason uh, banquet dinner, got to catch up with some of the items that were up for auction, and also talk a little bit with Brian McRae, who spoke with the team about uh, the season coming up. Players past and present, legends of the program, boosters, sponsors, and families gathered at Bruny Hall for the 9th Annual Seahawk Baseball Spring Training Banquet on January 29th. Treated to speakers, a dinner, refreshments, and of course the auction, which draws so much excitement, the season was officially kicked off for those closest to the program. One invited guest, former Major Leaguer Brian McRae, was asked to speak to the team in private before the event. We caught up with him and asked a little bit about his message. It really wasn't a message, it was just kind of just talking. You know, I basically gave them a little overview about, you know, what I've been doing since I retired and kind of things that I, I did while I was playing and had them ask me questions. Because I could sit here and talk about a whole lot of things. <laughs> it might not be what they want to yes. what they want to hear, so I opened it up to them to ask questions and they ask about, you know, my favorite ballparks, uh, you know, favorite teammates, memorable memorable things that happen and I think you know you get more out of them especially kids that you get more out of them if you let them initiate what you're going to talk about. McCray was also asked about the new bats and about the different experiences he had as a young player entering college versus that of today's player. 
I think that what a lot of kids have done in their summer ball, in those leagues, they swung wooden bats and they swing wood a lot in the fall. So I think it's different now that kids are getting acclimated to the wooden bat a lot sooner than they have been before. And with this change now, I think your good hitters are still going to be your good hitters. And your guys that were kind of on the edge, they're going to have to step it up a little bit. It's different in the sense that um, the junior colleges were where a lot of the good athletes went in Florida, because I, I played high school baseball in Florida and high school football in Missouri. I was getting recruited baseball-wise, not by the Miamis and the Florida States and the Floridas, but by all the junior colleges in the area. And the junior colleges were getting the good players because they were gonna be one and done. You could do that, you know, you can do that at a junior college. With so many pleasantries in the room in anticipation of the upcoming season, it was easy to get lost in the moment. There was no Christina Aguilera moment, however, for Topsail head coach Bill White, who got the night going the same as all the season's games will start, with a perfect rendition of the national anthem. And the Well, it's shaping up to be a pretty good season out here at Brooksfield as well as on the road for the Seahawks. When we look at the schedule, it looks pretty favorable for the Seahawks. They're only picked fourth, but it looks like there's a few more wins in there. Chuck, when you look at the schedule, what do you circle as the key games, the games that you think are, are prime time tickets? Well, I think it starts on uh, April the 26th with Coastal Carolina here. Uh, you know, Coastal's a perennial power and uh, those are always big RPI games for UNCW, but then after Coastal, they go to uh, James Madison, pick to finish first in the CAA, and then they play Elon at home, and Elon uh, has gone to three straight uh, NCAA uh, uh, regionals. So right. with that in mind, you know, Elon will be good, and then they return home and play Georgia State, which is picked to finish second in the league, and they have a ton of people back and all, and then, um, and then after that, uh, they've got the North Carolina Tar Heels here, which is always an important game. And, and then uh, they go to Old Dominion uh, for three, and, uh, and then they've got uh, Coastal Carolina and Conway, and then they close with uh, Virginia Commonwealth, which is picked to finish third. So the, the teams that are picked to finish ahead of the Seahawks in the standings are the ones that they right. uh, play toward the end of the year. Now looking at that, does that maybe help the Seahawks a little bit? That there, There's so many young guys, so many new guys, maybe 15 of them you were saying on the roster, mm -hmm. to put all those meaningful games at the back half? I think it will because I think if there's uh, any uh, nerves or any jitters, I think that there would probably be early in the year and so I think they'd get them out of the way and uh, this team's confidence probably would really grow. Uh, in between they have some pretty good games against EMC State, East Carolina and other right. people on the schedule so I think it would be a, uh, a, a really a confidence booster heading into that important stretch of the schedule. Right, and East Carolina, you know, they're disappointing last year, they're looking to rebound a little bit. How important is it for those young guys to maybe win some of these early games to set themselves up for the importance of the back half of their schedule? I think it's important because uh, what happened last year uh, is a pretty good example. They uh, struggled uh, early on and really played well toward the end of the year. It took them a while to really get it going which I think starting out of the gate very fast this year will be very important, uh, especially with uh, a club that is mixing in new players and they have right. players who are going to play but haven't really played really a great deal in the past. Mm -hmm. So I think it'll, uh, uh, I think a good start is very, very important for this club in particular. Well, tap into your magic ball for me, your magic eight ball, <laughs> shake it up. You know, your crystal ball, rub it around a little bit. Tell me, what do we see at the end of the season? What is your forecast? I see the team going 37 and 19, provided none of the regular season games are rained out. And I see them going into the tournament. Uh, you know, only the top four go into the tournament. Right. I see them maybe somewhere as maybe possibly a number three seed, perhaps, or maybe even a two. But because they play such a good schedule and being in this state, uh, with uh, the uh, RPI games and being uh -huh. close to uh, Coastal Carolina and Conway, 
I think some of those games really benefit them and a good record uh, going into the conference tournament uh, may set them up for perhaps a at large spot and right. uh, the other thing is uh, by having a good record going in and you win the tournament, you set yourself up for possibly as high as maybe a number two seed, uh, you know, in a regional. Well, you may as well set the bar high, you know, <laughs> a lot of expectations to live up to, but a lot of the uh, so-called experts out there aren't seeing it necessarily the same way. You know, there's some wins to be had out there, and the season gets started on Friday. UNCW will be wearing their blue tops, as was voted on by the uh, mass population. That's a four o'clock start here at Brooksfield against Jacksonville. Be sure to check out all of Chuck Carey's coverage on the Seahawks all year long, as well as his blog, Baseball Nut. It's all over Star News Online. You can get a bunch of inside stuff. I know it's already well populated right now with some of the key matchups throughout the season, some of the key teams and what to look for, as well as some tidbits for Media Day and, and happenings past, so to speak. Yes. But uh, for Chuck Carey, I'm Aaron Schoonmaker. Thanks for uh, tuning in to the Seahawks preview. and. We'll be back throughout the season to keep you updated. Thanks, guys. It's, uh, it's pretty cool because I, I grew up grew up watching uh, the Seahawks play since I can barely old enough to walk. And uh, growing up watching them, they, they've always seemed like a very good program. Um, field's beautiful, and I've always wanted to be a part of it. And it's a real honor to be out here.